Carthage was here? In Africa, glass trade beads are still a big business, often passed down through many generations. Garbe Mohammed is a fourth generation West African bead merchant who will be succeeded by his son in the bead market trade. The bead market has trade beads from different lands and different ages. Merchants from all over the world come to buy and trade beads. But among Garbe Mohammed's beads, there are a few priced beads that he will not sell. Like a face bead that took him decades to find. This is the face bead. I've been searching for this bead almost 20 years. It's a spiritual bead, and this one was found in northern Nigeria, he says. These beads are right from the Roman Empire. They were used for evil spirits. They wear it for protection against evil spirits. So maybe you will go around the whole of this market. These are the only one you can see, he says. Although Garbe may be an expert on beads, he is mistaken in identifying these glass face beads as Roman. Ancient core form fused glass face beads such as these were a high-end luxury product made by the maritime Phoenicians, particularly by the Carthaginians. The Phoenicians were an economic and cultural force in the Mediterranean from 1200 BC. Their realm extended from the Syro-Palestinian coast to North Africa, and they controlled much of the trade in this region and across the Mediterranean. They became skilled glass workers who fashioned technically masterful beads and developed unique forms of pendants made by core forming. These objects were often traded. The powerful port city of Carthage, located in modern Tunisia, which was established by 800 BC, was the center of production for many of these beads and pendants. Pendants with men's heads, featuring curly hair and beards, are by far the best-known work of the Phoenicians. While the Romans would continue to display the human face on their glass beads, the type of head pendants fashioned by the Phoenicians ended with the demise of their kingdom. Archaeological excavations have shown that this was a craft common to both Phoenicians and Eastern Greek workshops, at least in the Archaic period. The number of objects discovered in Cyprus, very similar in type to finds in Phoenician, suggests the existence of not one, but a great many centers along the Syria-Lebanon-Palestine coast and in Cyprus, already active by the mid-7th century, continuing through to the 3rd and 2nd century BC. It seems that the Phoenicians built local glassmaking centers on their colonies. The production of core form fused glass faces was big business from the early 1st millennium BC. Different Phoenician colonies and cities produced variations of these glass heads. Male human heads with smooth hair and beard, biblos, and with added headband, sidon. Male heads with curly hair and long vertically grooved beards, um el amad. Male heads with locks of hair and beard in a fan-like arrangement, sidon. Primary motif was the bearded Phoenician face. In terms of iconology, is most often present human heads with curly hair, beards, smooth or wavy. Core form fused glass faces were made to represent the peoples they traded with, like the glass faces in Garbis collection. These precious man-made jewels of the ancient world was a closely guarded technological secret, driving up the trade value of these core form fused glass faces to the indigenous peoples in the lands they traded with. A good trade item to have when dealing with people groups who already possessed abundant natural resources in gold and other metals, grains and animals, and many other things like ancient Philippines. Early Spanish historians listed Carthage and the Phoenicians as those who first settled the Philippine archipelago. Now then, I have said as much as there is to say of the origin of the Indians. If we speak of the first and most remote, for to endeavor to determine the first settlers of these lands, whence and how they came, whether they were Carthaginians, Jews, Spaniards, Phoenicians, Greeks, Chinese, Tartars, etc. Carthage is the least understood imperial actor in the ancient western Mediterranean. No continuous Carthaginian literary or historical narrative survives due to the thorough nature of Roman destruction.
maritime master of the Western Mediterranean by 300 BC, Carthage was a threat to Rome. The Punic Wars raged on from 264 BC to 146 BC when Carthage was destroyed by the Romans and its citizens sold to slavery. Core formed fused glass faces in the bearded Phoenician motif may be found among the tribes of the Philippines who have neither beards nor knowledge of early glass making technology. There are glass face beads valued by the indigenous peoples which they claim represent their tribal ancestors. Interestingly, these glass faces seem to resemble the three people groups described by Spanish historians on our island. Black Negroes, most of whom have kinky hair and very few have lank. They are flat-nosed and almost all of them have thick, projecting lips. The artifact seen to represent the Negritos was a masterpiece of ancient times with four faces, radially balanced using dark brown glass for the face and the rounded nose. Bands of orange glass mark the termination points of the head and neck and is used for the large lips. Orange glass is also used to emphasize the large circular staring eyes made with rings of black and white glass. Then there came the Austronesians, described by historians as mestizos with similarities to the Chinese and Japanese in their face, body, color, hair, customs, manner and behavior. Glass faces that appear to represent this group have a light-skinned toned face over a dark brown core. The glass artisans broke away from the conventional rounded eyes to accentuate the almond shape under the distinctly large eyebrows with raised orange dot between them. The master glassmakers symmetrically balanced two faces on each ornament. A band of white glass was used at the top and bottom. A third group was identified as the Malays because of similarities in language and culture, as well as by their color and the shape of their faces. The Spaniards saw them as a remarkable class of people that were scattered throughout the many islands of this archipelago, the chief of whom are the Tagalogs, Pampangos, Visayans, and Mindanaos. The glass faces attributed to this people group has a distinct Kayumangi skin tone and large rounded eyes. What sets these glass head beads apart is the presence of ancient Phoenician chevron beads that have been reheated and fused into the faces. Melted chevron beads are used for the hair in the back of the head, while three beads are fused in to represent the ears and to crown the forehead, forming a powerful triangular region that draws your attention to the staring eyes. Phoenician glass face beads of other nations have also been found on our islands. Egyptian faces with clean shaved heads and conical bound beards, a popular style in ancient Egypt, West Asiatic faces, and tribal faces from Africa and other distant lands. The remarkable core formed fused glass faces became a premium Phoenician trade item, a symbol of prestige and possibly a protective talisman from around 700 BC to 200 BC. Forgotten by most of the world, but not in Southeast Asia, where Phoenician core form fused glass faces are still being handmade and reproduced in the nations of Thailand, India, and Nepal, countries in the Golden Lands, Orea Chersonesus, through which the Phoenicians may have traveled to reach the Isle of Gold, Krise. It may shock Garbe to discover that similar glass faces as his are still being made in Indonesia. The fused glass faces made in Southeast Asia do not seem to be reproductions from any known colony. Although they have some similarities with the glass faces from Carthage, what originals are the Southeast Asian nations copying? Could these be the variations developed in the colonies on these distant lands? Ancient core form fused glass faces do not have the sheen of new glass. Instead, they bear the patina of thousands of years of natural weathering. Artificial forced aging of new copies are obvious when set side by side with the original artifacts. Phoenicians used the natron glass with low soda and magnesium content. Real Phoenician core form fused glass faces have a higher quality of glass and heavier weight than their newer counterparts, as well as a higher level of craftsmanship. 
these faces have a solemn dignity imbued by the skillful hand of the Phoenician glassmaker. Nothing is hand painted. Each color is the color of the molten glass fused onto the core form. Are these glass faces tribal art? Or are they evidence to back up the historian's claim that Carthage was here? What do you think? Hannibal Barca of Carthage, considered one of the greatest military commanders in history, tells us, Many things which nature makes difficult becomes easy to the man who uses his brains. Thank you for joining us in opening the book of our past in the hope of a brighter future.